Hello everyone and welcome to Urban Brawl, which is a first-person beat-em-up, or at least that's how it was advertised. It Saigon. is a mod of Doom Always 2, I guess you could Saigon. say, though it is very far Stuff removed from like Doom this. 2 and was released as a separate game. Only on physical media, damage. even. That's really hard. We're going to be playing on punk-ass bitch difficulty. I have played on higher difficulties, but there are things about the game's design that make me not want to do that again. So our daughter has been kidnapped, and our apartment is on fire. That's a picture of our daughter. I should go back and grab Sarah. Sarah is our gun, but I don't want to get Sarah. I want to show off the other weapons we have. Fists, but if I wanted to carry something else, I'd have to drop it first. <laughs> this cheap shit, but it help ease the pain. The alcohol is like armor for us, it lowers the damage we take. Here's a fire extinguisher. Every punk and low life in the city was crawling out of that hole to find me. I had to use everything around me to survive. We can only hold one non-gun weapon at a time. This fire extinguisher is my favorite weapon in the game. It not only stuns the enemies, but it drains their health amazingly fast. So the art style is kind of awesome. It's really good. I like the sprite work also. Clearly inspired by older beat-em-ups, yeah. When we're reduced to our fist, we have just two options. We can do a real quick punch, or we can do an uppercut. Like that. The uppercut hurts a lot more. We have to aim our punches very carefully though, as with all of our weapons. So the main thing about this game's design is that we can't just punch and punch and punch. We have to punch, back away, and then move back in. That's basically the strategy for the whole game. There are almost always weapons around to help us do more damage, though, and there are a lot of them, too. The biggest challenge, as with most beat-em-ups, is when you get surrounded. It's the main reason you have to bob in and out. The enemies also don't come straight at you, they swerve around as you're seeing here. They counterattack super quickly, so unless you can stunlock them, this is really the best way to do things. And you're seeing that I'm having a lot of trouble with the hit detection. That's the main reason I did not want to play this on a higher difficulty. It's weird to call the hit detection bad, because it's not necessarily bad, just really precise. But I think in a game like this, it's a bit overly precise. I mean, this is not Xeno Clash. Because of this, I think it's not really fun to hit things. In spite of, you know, the really excellent sprite work and the satisfying punch sound. Yeah, that sounds good. The main reason to play this game, I think, is because of the music and story. Also, this knife is one of the strongest weapons in the game. It breaks very quickly, though. The weapons do have noticeably different strengths, and like I said, there are a lot of them, so that's good. The enemies also have varying health, like that girl has the least. So in case you couldn't hear that, we just said that there's a gay bar up here run by a man who works for the mob. And if you're wondering why the subtitles aren't on, it's because the subtitles are always out of sync with the dialogue, and I refuse to abide by that. So we think that the owner of the bar could give us some information about who exactly took our daughter. It is also a gay bar, and there's nothing wrong with having a gay bar in your game, but this game has uh, certain ideas about what homosexuals are like. And they make me kinda uncomfortable. I thought that it was all in-universe, but the game does insult the player by calling them gay if they quit, so no, it's not. But if you can look past that, the game's still kinda neat. I just think it's really childish and immature and pointless. This city apparently has nothing but thugs in it. Thugs for miles. 
This is actually the only level where we fight on a street. It's a good starter level, though, because, yeah, you know, it brings back- what is wrong with the sky? It brings back memories of old beat-em-ups, just like the soundtrack and art style. The enemies already swerve around you, I think the hit detection could be a little bit more lenient. Listen to that music go. Jerry talked. So full of shit he was fighting at the seams. Kept on glancing nervously over my shoulder at these five bull queers. I'm walking this way, Christ. I never did like the YMCA. This game does have some pretty good lines, like, So full of shit he was farting at the seams. That's a good line. So this is our first boss fight, and the basic idea is to always have a weapon. If you try and fight all these guys with just your fists, you're in big trouble. Thankfully, there's plenty of weapons to take them all out with. Do you get, do you get the homophobic jokes in this boss fight? They're pretty good jokes. I mean sarcastic, they're terrible. The boss fight itself isn't so bad though. Like most beat-em-ups, the first stage of this game is meant to teach you how the basic design works. You have to bob in and out if you want to have any chance of survival. Just charging head in is not the best idea. The music for this fight is also my favorite music in the game. I mean, come on, that's pretty good. Actually reminds me of the track Fight Night with Flippy from Croc. I think that's what it's called. What a weird time to bring up that game. So the boss fight gets kind of tedious after a bit. This is really all there is to it. But I mean, it's there to teach you something, so... It does that. after I dusted his fuck buddies. Said I had a nice ass for a washed up old Jake. More importantly, he said his friend downtown might have the information I want. For a price. Told him to call me a cab and shake me two fingers of bourbon. He could find a bottle that wasn't smashed. Cab was waiting for me out back, but... Something didn't sit right. I'd have to decide if I wanted to follow Marconi's tip and take the cab, or ignore his advice. Mobs not well known for their honesty. Only well, there was some way I could beat the information out of him. Jerry was an effeminate fag, but he was still a hardened criminal. Trashing him wouldn't net me nothing. Perhaps his car might make a good bargaining chip. Like he said, we have to beat up the guy's car for some reason. We are hurting the car, even though you can't tell. So yeah, the mob, that's true, not known for their honesty. I'm not sure what beating up his car is going to do about it. Because if we break his car, we don't really have a bargaining chip anymore. And he doesn't seem too concerned about it right now. I'm sure that will change when the cutscene activates. his fag wagon. I gave him exactly three seconds to grieve before I bashed his head through the passenger side window. Spilled his guts. Both ways. The mob. Police. Contract kidnappers. Some hotshot executive in the Phylex Corporation behind it all. Getting a cold knot in my stomach. Phylex? Christ. It's the largest defense contractor in the country. Before my wife Jennifer passed away, she was employed there. If they're involved, this is big. I decided to take the subway across town to their corporate headquarters. I think to myself this might be a bit too big to punch my way through. 
but I'll try anyway. For you, baby.